Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Clever Code. So, in this episode of the series, we're going to be taking a look at a rather famous example for the fast inverse square root of a number. Um, so, you know, what made this so famous was that it was featured in this uh, 1999 source code of Quake 3 Arena. And, you know, it's seen a lot of publicity on the internet, and you can tell that it's pretty famous as it has its own Wikipedia page. So I'll go ahead and link this, uh, this page below um, in the description of the video. Um, and you can look at that if you want more ideas um, or more information about why we care about, say, calculations of the fast inverse square root. Um, and you can see that we actually have the code right on this Wikipedia page. So this is kind of the original code from uh, Quake 3 Arena, and you can see it even has some of the original comments. Um, and you know the basic idea behind this is that um, you know some really clever people found that by doing the subtraction from this magic number constant um, of the you know input number, and then doing one iteration of Newton Raphs in division, which is uh, this division method. So that's also linked um, inside of here, just down here, this Newton's method. Right, they found that they could actually get a very good approximation of the uh, inverse square root of a number, right? And they could do it much faster than they could with, say, the pre-built-in functions for just calculating, um, say, the square root and doing the inverse of it, right? So, you know, while this this was a you know pretty clever idea and it worked worked great in terms of performance, it does suffer from undefined behavior, and that's even mentioned here in the article. So it says that in terms of C standards, reinterpreting a floating point value as an integer by dereferencing a casted pointer is considered undefined behavior. And you can see that right here um, as we're casting the floating point number to be uh, an integer, or in this case, a long, and vice versa, right? We're casting it uh, an integer to be a floating point number, right? So, you know, they even mention here that it's undefined behavior. And this type punning where we use a union and we start accessing, say, a you know, one of the members of the union that's not active, that's also undefined behavior. So what we'd really like to do is have the same performance, um, but without all this undefined behavior. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. So let's go ahead and exit out of that, and we'll go to our i square root.cpp. So here's our undefined behavior version stripped of the original comments, and again, just pointing out where the undefined behavior lies, right? So the undefined behavior lies is that we're casting a floating point number to an integer and dereferencing it, right? So we don't want this. And so um, you may be wondering, right, it's undefined behavior, but it made it into, say, a game or something. So, um, you know, should we care about undefined behavior? And the answer to that is yes, especially when we can have code that has the same performance without undefined behavior. The reason being is that undefined behavior isn't supported, right? So, um, you know, if I have something that has well-defined behavior, my code doesn't have any undefined behavior, I don't need to worry about when I update to, say, a new compiler or move to a different system, right? Because all of my behavior is well-defined. If I'm relying on undefined behavior, I don't really have those guarantees. So it makes it really, really difficult um, if you're trying to make write some code that's going to run on a lot of different platforms, um, right? It's and it's it's generally considered pretty bad practice uh, and unacceptable to have unbe undefined behavior in your code. Uh, that's not to say that it doesn't exist, and you know some people have very strong motivations for using things um, that are actually undefined behavior, um, but in in most programming instances, undefined behavior is considered a very bad thing. So how do we get around this, you know, this, how do we keep doing this trick uh, without the undefined behavior? Well, we can actually use something kind of clever here, right? So we can do a mem copy and we can basically just copy the bits. So we can copy the um, four bytes from this float to the integer i. And then we can do the exact same thing by, cat, by copying, you know, the bits from that integer i back to the floating point number, right? So we're just copying those four bytes back and forth. And this seems like it would have some extra overhead here, right? So instead of just reinterpreting the bits as a, uh, you know, as a float or an integer, it seems like we're going to have these extra steps of actually doing something like a copy. Um, and in reality, the compiler is really smart, right? Compilers it, are actually very, very clever and they can tell what we're trying to do here, right? So the code that we get generated for our, this implementation of the inverse square root that doesn't have any undefined behavior will actually have the exact same code generated as the one with undefined behavior, except we're guaranteed the result with this well-defined behavior version, while the undefined behavior version, we really don't have any guarantees. So while this is all great and we've shown that we can you know, do this kind of clever hack for calculating the inverse square root, 
Um, should we still be doing something like this today for inverse square root? And the answer is, of course, absolutely not, right? We have hardware support for things like this now. So here we see the um, a much better implementation of this using a um, an Intel intrinsic, right? Or using a SIMD intrinsic here. So we actually have a um, we actually have an intrinsic for calculating the approximate square root of uh, single precision numbers here. So here we're doing it four at a time, right? Using this uh, M128 data type, and so. You know, we, we can basically reduce this entire code um, to a single instruction here because it's implemented in hardware. So what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to benchmark all of these and look at the assembly and see what they look like. So here we see we've got the uh, undefined behavior bench. We have the well-defined behavior bench and you see they do the same thing. We're gonna be doing it um, across four different uh, floating point numbers here just because the intrinsic is for um, 128 bits which is just gonna be a uh, four floating point number. So just to keep it kind of fair, um, we'll do it for four floating point numbers for each of them. So let's go ahead and see how they uh, stack up against each other. So we'll just use G++, link it against libbenchmark and libpthread. Uh, that's just needed for Google Benchmark. And let's give it O3 optimizations here. And if you're wondering what that volatile was for, that's just so that you know um, it doesn't get all optimized out since we're not using a result. Um, okay, so there's our code, or there's our, our executable, and you can see that when we run it, we end up getting about the same results for the undefined, the well-defined behavior, and then we end up getting much faster um, for our intrinsic, right? So let's go ahead and kind of dig in a little bit deeper, and let's look at it from the assembly level of why the undefined behavior and the well-defined behavior benchmarks are so similar. So we can just use object dump dash dc on a dot out and we'll go ahead and put this to uh, out dot sass or out dot s rather. Let's go to out dot s and let's look for um, let's look for our square root uh, benchmarks, right? So if we go ahead and go down, okay. So we've got our undefined behavior benchmark here. So you see that it's a fairly short function, right? You see there's our uh, our magic number constant here that we load in. So you know here's our undefined behavior benchmark, and then just below it we have our um, we have our well-defined behavior benchmark, right? And you see that they look exactly the same, right? So this function, uh, which corresponds to our um, which corresponds to our well-defined behavior one, it really looks exactly the same as the one for our undefined behavior benchmark, right? So there's no actual difference in the code generated, which is why the performance is the same. But one of these has undefined behavior, the other one does not, right? So we don't need to worry about that mem copy we put in. That mem copy just makes sure that we have well-defined behavior. And then of course we have our very small function here, which is for calculating the fast inverse um, square root of a number with just a single instruction, right? So if we're using these SIMD intrinsics, a lot of times they will just uh, boil down to using a single instruction here. So in this case, right, this is why we end up getting that speed up here. All right, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. So we looked at the fast inverse square root of a number and how we can avoid the undefined behavior in the original version and how we can even avoid doing this kind of hack itself by just using a SIMD intrinsic. So again, that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. So it's all going to be under our repositories, or you can find it on the front here at clever code. And here we're looking at um, inverse square root. And here's our example with all the benchmarks. So feel free to download this, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.